All right, everyone, welcome back again to the, our social media for your business part two. This is our last day of class, and what we're going to do is talk about YouTube. YouTube, obviously, is a big video sharing site. What we're going to do is spend some time to actually create a video and then talk about uploading it to YouTube and optimizing for it to be found because YouTube, by some measures, is the second largest social network in the world. Number one is Facebook. You may not think about it, but number two, by some measures, is YouTube. And YouTube has the trappings of other social networks, a way to add content, a way to like and to comment and to share and all of that, just like a social network. But it's obviously focused on video. So I've got a handout for you. We're not going to be able to dwell on it too much. You should explore it. It's got some good information. But I've got a handout for you and some video clips because I don't expect everyone to be comfortable with recording something and we wouldn't have the time. So I've got some video clips for you and I'm going to show you the software to edit the video clips because nice looking videos, well edited videos take you a long way. People like to look at interesting videos, videos that are shot well and um, I'll show you how to work with software to edit videos very basically. So let's go to the desktop Open up computer window at the top left corner, computer. Yes, let's get the class started and then we can deal with that in a little bit. So we're we'll open the network location and then let's scroll down to this class, which is Campus Social 2. I've got two things for you. One is a PDF, and as I said, I apologize, I didn't have the version as handy as I wanted for this class. I'm going to give you a version that I do at Southwestern College, but it still applies. There's CIS 257-12 YouTube. Drag that to your desktop or your flash drive. We'll take a look at it in a moment. But what you also want to do is drag this folder of video examples. I've got three video clips here that we're going to work with. So drag those to your desktop. You want both my sheet number 12 and the video clips to your desktop. Take a moment to do that. If anyone needs help doing that, let me know. <clears throat> so if we take a quick look at the document, this is going to be an assignment that I would give at Southwestern College, but you can also look at it. Where it talks about YouTube, the very first YouTube videos were actually published in 2005. So YouTube has been around for about a decade. Um, and the very first video was actually one at the San Diego Zoo. Uh, and it's still around, so you can look that up. YouTube is very valuable because it's a social network uh, that has so much content. You could use it for marketing tools, of course. Uh, so many times what I do is I need to figure out something and I go directly to YouTube to find a video on it rather than doing a Google search, perhaps. Uh, recently, uh, I had to fix a doorbell, and I'm like, how do you break a doorbell? So I looked it up on YouTube, and there were several videos that explain how it works, and I, oh, I know how a doorbell works now. And so uh, I fixed my doorbell. So the purpose of this sheet is that if you were in my class where you would, need, where you would get a grade and such, here's an assignment, you can ignore all of that, but what you should look at is at the bottom here, types of videos. This is not in all inclusive list of types of videos. These are six examples for you to think about what kind of video that I can create that applies with my business. I don't quite have time to go through them all. You should do that on your own. There's a video called the style called the unboxing video and literally it is a video of someone opening a box. Well opening a product box um, they're very popular. I have examples linked here you might think, well, how could this video have 100,000 views of all that they're doing is opening a video game box? Well, that's a huge demographic. The video game industry itself, perhaps by some measures, is more profitable than the movie industry. Uh, so much to, be, uh, to do in that sphere. Think about it in these terms. I've got a product. I'm Victor's Bakery. I'm selling cupcakes, and I have a, the infrastructure that I can sell my baked goods throughout the U.S., I would, it would be great for me to think about engaging my customers by saying, hey everyone, create an unboxing video for us and we'll share it. 
because people love that fleeting internet fame and simply enticing people, you make a video of my product and we'll share it. So unboxing videos, all of these videos can be as amateur or professional as you want or as necessitates. Simply taking out your cell phone and in one hand doing the unboxing, uh, recording with one hand, doing the unboxing with the other, that could work, that could be popular, that could resonate with people, that could get you views. And when we get to the part about, okay, we're, we're making these videos and we've uploaded them to YouTube, what's the point of uh, putting videos? It's still a way to drive traffic to your website, as we'll see later. Screen capture tutorial. That's what I'm engaging with right now. Everything that I'm doing on my screen is being recorded, and my voice, my, my movements on the mouse, all that's being recorded. What if you are a tech... Um, you know, company, and you want to teach people how to install WordPress, uh, how to um, uh, use your antivirus software, how to um, do something on the computer. That's a kind of video that you can do as well. The software that I use to record these lectures is right here. It's free. It's for Windows. It's for Mac. It's called Open Broadcaster Software. All you need is a webcam. And if you've got a laptop, it's got one built in, probably. I use this one that I bought here. This is a Logitech C910. It's a bit old now. The 920 is out, maybe the 930, but I really like it. It's got good video quality, good audio quality. So Open Broadcaster Software is free software, Mac and Windows. You download it, you set it up a little bit, and what it's doing is it's capturing everything I'm doing on my computer and my voice. You can see my voice right there. You can see what I'm doing on screen. And this is a kind of YouTube video also that gets a lot of views, a lot of hits. A screen capture tutorial. When I have to show someone something to do on the computer, I can use that free software, record it, edit it, put some music on it perhaps, titles, and upload it. I've got a video. I recently did a video that last time I checked it already has 4,000 views on how to... Um, it's no, it's a uh, it's a screen capture tutorial on uh, create an Android app in five minutes. Now, obviously, that's a little bit of hyperbole. It takes much more time than that, but in five minutes, I show where to get the software, how to set it up, how to start using it, and that's was done with screen capture tutorial concept. Many times, the how to type of video bleeds in with the screen capture, especially when it's tech related. I've been saying how to build an Android app how to install WordPress, maybe uh, getting out of the realm of computers, how to, in, how to fix your doorbell. So again, I could use this little camera that I've got in my pocket all the time. It's pretty good. It's HD quality. It's got image stabilization. Um, and I can hold this and have someone else speak and give a how-to presentation, how to speak in, in public. That's a kind of video that I could do as well. Higher level up is to put my uh, put my camera here perhaps you know on the table like that shaky camera is not fun especially when someone is is talking so they sell accessories that can attach to your phone and attach to a tripod a traditional tripod like twelve dollars at fries it's universal it can attach to just about any reasonable size phone and then it's got a little screw mount and you screw it on, you put it onto your um, tripod if you've still got tripods. The next higher level up of course is to buy a more professional camera. Nikon, Canon, Sony, Pentax, whatever. Those will uh, let you do what you need. So how to do something. Review types of videos are also very popular. That's the kind that we're gonna do in a moment. I've got a few video clips of me reviewing uh, a phone, so you could review a phone, a game, a sporting event, uh, a play, your product, a self-review, and that sort of thing. So just talking about the product, and again, these can be as professional, as amateur as you want, even uh, how does it go, the best, the best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, you plan to make a really amazing video, and you set up a video shoot and do everything, and you spend so much time on it, and you get 20 hits. But then something that you were holding on to just like this and talking about it passionately, 500 hits. You never know. So your reviews. 
lists, top 10 movies, top 10 WordPress plugins, top 2 this, top 3 that, top 40 that. It doesn't matter the number, it just matters that it's a list that is contained, that you're counting down top 5 costumes at Comic-Con, number 5 to 1. And so whatever list of things, the, five, the bottom five worst whatever service providers, you could be doing videos on a variety of things, and you can mix and match these. I could do a screen capture tutorial mixed with a list in that I'm recording my video of my screen as I visit websites and talk about number five best web design website, whatever, number four best web design website, this one, and I'm recording my screen at the same time. And then finally, advertisements. Traditional 30 second, 40 second, 60 second, 10 second video clips advertising your business, your brand, your product, etc. I don't have the time to show these. I really want to. You need to look at them yourself. And for some reason, my projector doesn't play sound anymore. So I doesn't, it's a moot point anyway to play these. But on advertisement, I'm proud of this one. This is a video that my company created for a local Italian food restaurant. And uh, we had our Canon cameras, which take photos, but these modern cameras also do video very well. Uh, so you should check that out at some point. And I'm going to show you what I did to create that, that video. Basically, you don't need very expensive high-end equipment. And the software to create these kinds of videos is free as well. On the Mac, you've got iMovie. That's a free download. It lets you create videos very easily. On Windows, you've got Windows Movie Maker. So that's what we're going to use together. The concepts that I show you in Movie Maker will also still apply to iMovie, except that the buttons will be different and maybe the names of the screens will be different, but the concepts will still, will still happen. Let me actually show you one. I don't think you'll be able to hear it, unfortunately. I'll show you this advertisement, break it down a little bit, and then we'll get into it because it's just really exciting once you get into creating videos. if my internet would cooperate. This is the this is the client. Uh, this Italian food restaurant. So shots of the restaurant, shots of preparing the food, these close-ups. The chef is making this chicken dish. It's not my hand. It's my hand holding the camera. That's exactly what we're going to learn. This is a bunch of video clips put together, and then at the end, the still shot. But this was basically, and then of course, advertising to get you to go buy the food. That's the whole point of this. Um, you're going to, uh, here's another one in the same vein. Uh, the point is, you can record. This was all in a, you know, a little bit higher end Canon camera, but this can be done right on your, right on your phone. Uh, and it's just a bunch of shots, video clips put together, and this is all editing. That's what I'm going to show you, using the software to edit these clips together. Because simply holding the camera in one place, perhaps, is a bit passe now, especially if there isn't much movement going on. Here I've got close-ups of the, of the preparation of the plating, I've got music going on in the background, and here, and then at the end, one little swoop right there as a style, and then there we go. Everyone's hungry now, go to that yeah. restaurant. Thanks for getting us hungry. <laughs> You are welcome. Go to the restaurant and tell them Victor sent you. So this is for this client that's got 115 views, 129 views, there's another one with like a thousand, etc. But the point of this is, this is what I'm going to show you how to do. And again, if we had two days to work on this, we would spend more time on it. But that is hopefully enticing you that you would be able to create something like that. And people always ask me, how long did it take and all of that? That's always a hard answer for me to give about how long does any of this creative stuff take. 
because I forget to keep track of it. I just get to work and then suddenly hours passed. Which of course uh, my, my billing person hates that because I'm terrible at, at the time management. So we went to the restaurant, we had a couple of cameras, uh, we just were there for maybe an hour or two as the chefs prepared different things. We hovered around, recorded different things, and then got home and I started to put the video clips together and then that took a few hours. I'm going to say, just to round it up, this took one day. Now, whatever you want to define one day as. Um, and that, of course, to just to get to that point, took you know months of experience to do this. I've been playing with making YouTube videos since around 2008 or 9, perhaps. It's taken a while. I really feel like my latest things have been the best, but uh, as I look back through them, there's been some good videos here and there. And uh, it does take time to be comfortable with doing all of this, the software itself, because I can teach you the software. That's not that complicated. Getting the concept, getting the vision from your head to the computer and as a video clip, that's the hard part, and that's what takes practice. That's why I've got here some, some, some links. Uh, from this website, Creating Professional Online Video Blog Post and the Vimeo Video School. Vimeo is the big competitor to YouTube. It's another place to upload videos. But what I like is that they've got here this whole video school where from beginning to end, they talk about what kinds of cameras, software, techniques, do's and don'ts, and it's free. The big secret that I'm going to tell you about video production, depending on the kind of video, let's say unboxing how to review an advertisement is um, the the sound and the video which is like of course a video is sound and video and that's the big secret that you need good sound and video yes because these things might record really good video but if I'm standing here and you're sitting there I'm not gonna hear you the microphone is not gonna hear you the video will see you great, it's HD, but the sound will not travel that far. So you might have a great looking video, bad audio, it's a bad video. <coughs> Vice versa, you might have great audio. Maybe I've got, because I'm holding my camera right here, my voice is going to pick up great. And I'm recording stuff right here talking about my products. Great audio, I'm right up close to the mic. Bad video, because my hand's shaking, the light here is terrible. The human eye is an amazing instrument because it can change on the fly to absorb the light. But these things, even the best cameras, pale in comparison because they're not smart enough, like our eye, to really capture light well. And even just this weird mixture of light that we've, going on, we've got going on here, from those lights, from this light, ambient light, I've still got shadow here. This is going to get confused and probably record a dark video, even though there's so much light here then I've got bad video, good audio, it's a bad video. The better that you can have good audio and good video, the likelier that it's a good video. Pleasant to look at, pleasant to listen to. And so some ways to fix this, okay, I'm not going to stand this far away and record you. I'm going to get closer so that the microphone picks it up. I'm shaking too much. One trick is that if you tuck your hands in a little bit more like this, like a Tyrannosaurus, uh, you tuck your hands in like this, this is going to stabilize you better than like this. Everyone's probably like this all the time, like this. This is very shaky. Tuck yourself in like this, get practice with that, that's going to stabilize you a bit more. So with this kind of camera, with the Canon cameras, the big movie cameras, they're shoulder mounted because then you're a tripod. It's on your shoulder, it's big and heavy, you're moving around like this, much better. Uh, when everyone moved over to those little, little handheld one, one hand things, so shaky. So if you're at least like this, tucked in, like this tucked in, you're going to look weird, but that's all in the service of art. And so you'll be able to record a little bit more stable video. And these things are coming with video stabilization built in, which is better. But a lot to think about and a lot to do because we're going to work with video clips that I've already shot and I'm going to then show you how to edit them because that's the other part of the thing. Are you just gonna set the tripod down, stand in front of it and talk? That might work depending on your audience, 
or perhaps at least you want to add some text at the beginning of the video, some text at the end, some text during the video. As you're speaking, maybe say the name of your product right below your, your headshot. Uh, maybe you stumbled upon your words. No problem. We can cut that out. We can cut video and audio just like we can do graphics or text. Um, so that's what we're about to do. Any general conceptual questions at this point? How many of you had any experience in video creation? The shaky ones. The shaky ones, okay. We have a filter that can help stop the shape in the software too. So if your video is a bit shaky, the software can help correct it. It won't be magic, you know, if you're falling and all of that, it's not going to fix it. But you're going to see that the software is actually pretty powerful. We'll be able to filter it. If it was your video a little dark, we have some ability to brighten it up too. But the better that you can shoot your original video, the more likelihood you're going to get a good video by the end. So I'm going to close this. Let's go to the Start menu. We've got a Windows computer. So we have Windows Movie Maker. It's free, although it's usually not installed on computers nowadays by default. You have to go online and search Windows Movie Maker, and then you'll get the free download. Just like iMovie. Macs don't have iMovie installed by default. You have to get it from the App Store. Is, it, you, uh, is it safe to download it, though? Of course. This is an official Microsoft product. So it's come straight from the Microsoft website, and it's completely safe. Let's go to the Start menu, and let's uh, search here Movie Maker. And you should get your program, Windows Movie Maker. If you don't have it, it'll most likely tell you, go online to get Windows Live Essentials. It's part of their suite of free stuff, and one of it is Movie Maker. It's part of a package that's already installed on these computers, but when you go to your own Windows computer and you search for it and it doesn't have it, it'll tell you to download it. It'll go to the Microsoft site and you can get it. On the Mac, you have to go to your App Store and search iMovie, download it. If we're using this phone, is there IT? We don't need to worry about any phones at the moment, uh, but I've already got the videos for you. But just about any any phone nowadays can record pretty good video. You know about the application it's called Movie? That's the one you're talking about. iMovie. Um, yeah, that's that's one to for you to do it on your phone, which is very great conceptually, but it's going to be frustrating because it's so small. Even if you've got a big one, you know, dealing with the video clips and everything on this little thing, it's going to be a little annoying. So, but it is doable. I've done it. Let's go to Movie Maker then. Yes. I think so. Well, you don't need to download it, you should go, go to it directly. Let's talk about the anatomy briefly of this software, because this is software just like anything else, like Word, or Excel, or Photoshop, or a web browser. It's software, it has a lot, lots of different buttons and such, and it's a brand new interface to look at, and buttons to learn, and everything. And we won't have the time to explore every screen, but I'll tell you enough things that, are, that will be relevant. We're going to add video, or audio, or photo, clips here. And the term clips is that I can record a little bit, and I record another little bit, and I record another little bit. Those are clips. I put them all together into one long movie. So they're all going to be listed here when we get to that point. All the clips together are going to make one movie in total. It's going to be here. I can preview my video here. It'll tell me how long my video is. I'm looking at, you know, one minute of my five minute video. I'll just tell you a time indicator. This thing here, this playhead, will tell you you're at the start of your video, the middle of the video, end of the video. We can drag it just like we were watching a video. We've got play, we've got rewind and such. 
So we're going to be previewing our video here as we build it out of clips over here. This is all on our home screen. You've got various quick buttons. Paste a video or text, add videos, add music, turn on my webcam. That's cool. If I've got a webcam on my laptop, I can record directly from here to do one of my unboxing videos, let's say. We'll see that we can add text. A title is text that appears before your video, and credits is text that appears at the end of your video. Notice if you hover over any of these things, it'll pop up to tell you something. Caption is text that can appear during the video. We can add as many captions as we want throughout our video, but basically we've got one title and one credits at the beginning of the end. Now, Windows Movie Maker and iMovie are very good amateur software, amateur video software. There are the professional ones that are very expensive that will give you much better results, but they are very expensive. And the videos that I showed you a moment ago, I made those in iMovie. So you don't need anything highly expensive to create videos. And nowadays, I use Movie Maker because I'm on my Windows machine much more than my, than my Mac. And I use this to create pretty much all the videos nowadays for clients or my own. And it doesn't have every possible thing, but enough of a, enough tools to get the job done. It doesn't have green screen capabilities, it doesn't have picture in picture and all of that stuff, but it does what you'll need. Some other icons here. When we're done with the video, we can upload it directly to OneDrive, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, and that sort of thing. So there's buttons I'm going to skip. Take a quick look at the animation tab. This is where you make your transitions. I'm indoors talking about something. Suddenly I'm outdoors. Do I want that to be a hard cut, a hard transition? Suddenly I'm indoors, suddenly I'm outdoors? Or do I want that to fade together? I have various transitions that we can use here. Um, we'll see those. Duration, slow down the video speed up the video. There's times when I'm doing something, let's say I'm doing an unboxing video and I'm struggling to open the box. I could speed that part up. I could make that part go really quick and then that part's done and then I go back to normal speed. Or I can slow things down to really emphasize something. We have that ability. We have this pan and zoom. You've seen documentaries, I'm sure, where there's a photo of a battlefield and the camera slowly moves across the photo. That's all of that adding a stationary photo, but then having the camera move around it. That's built in too. Visual effects. I have some ability to change the look of my clips. Maybe I, if I add one of these filters to turn it into black and white or sepia tone or brighten up the colors, I could, I could add emphasis to a particular video clip. Or maybe I'm talking about something from the past, I can add a video clip that looks nostalgic, I mean a video effect that looks uh, nostalgic. I can apply it to individual clips or the whole movie. I can play a little bit with the brightness. Again, if my video is shot in really low light, this is gonna help, but not fix things. If right now your video, maybe if you're recording me here, there's a lot of ambient light, nothing directly on me. I need to brighten it up a bit. That could help. There's a few things regarding the project that you usually don't work with here, but notice there is in the audio, I can have a video that I recorded. Um, I can have a video that I recorded. I'm stop talking to the camera, and then I also want to add a music bed, which just means music playing behind the whole video. <clears throat> my voice and the music behind the video are gonna fight. So I can say emphasize narration, emphasize video, emphasize music. Because I can also add voiceover narration to it, it'll make that voice stand out more. Maybe I want the sound of my video to take precedence over the other sounds. Maybe I want the music that I add later to take precedence over the other sounds. Or maybe I want them all equal. I'm gonna leave the default. But that's something to think about as we add clips. Are you going to provide me as some kind of example using as what you're explaining right now? For maybe 30 seconds, example, you just do an actual 
Did you copy the video examples folder? Because yes. the answer is yes. We're gonna do it in. We're gonna do it in a moment. We're gonna we're gonna do it in a moment. Yes. And then we've got the view screen, where it's just zoom in, zoom out, and such. And so, again, I can show you the software, but how you make your vision happen, that's going to be more up to you. So what I've given you in the video examples folder are three quick videos that I put together yesterday where I'm reviewing a product. My concept is, let's say I, if you get, if you want to look at the videos quickly, if you go back to the folder and you double click one, it might pop up about welcome, just click recommended settings and finish. But um, I've got a concept where I've got a um, tech review website. And I'm going to be doing my on-the-go reviews. As I'm walking on the go, I'm reviewing a product. That's my hook. And so here, I'm going to step out my house and I'm going to review that particular product. So this is a... 17 second clip. I'm starting indoors. I've got this idea and then I hesitated a while at the beginning before I started to speak. I want to cut some of that out. We'll see how to do that. Then I'm outside. Again, I'm setting myself up. Okay, time to record. Cut that part out. I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to mix this clip with the previous clip. And the third clip, I'm in the car, I'm going to review it a little bit more. I'm not going to drive. I'm not going to drive, but I'm going to review it a little bit more. Then, the, then this is over. So all three of these clips, I'm going to put them together. Maybe I shot them out of order, and I want to put them in the right order. I want to remove my mistakes. There was a mistake here. And then I'm going right there. And then I'm going to add text at the beginning, text at the end, and music throughout the whole thing. Did you just make me this morning? No, yesterday. <laughs> um, so these three clips we're going to use here in Movie Maker. Notice uh, it says we don't have any videos yet. You can drag all three of them into this area, or you can click. So let's go ahead and click here. Click here to browse for videos. Go to your desktop where you copy these video examples. Don't get them from the network. You want a copy of these videos onto your desktop video examples. And then you want to draw a little box around all three of them like that to select all three. I want all three of these clips. If you've got headphones you'll be able to do this the best because your computers don't have sound. We don't want you to turn up your sound on your computers because we're all going to be annoying each other. If you've got headphones, plug them in. I don't have audio either, unfortunately, so I'll have to kind of do it halfway. But select all three and open. Your computer then is going to look at the videos and process them. Eventually, the progress bar should end, and I've got my three clips over here. Notice there's the first video, second video, third video. How can I tell? Well, a video is defined by these little sprocket holes, like classic film. This is one video. If you click on that, it's from here to here. That's the first part. Click on that one. That's another part, and then this one is another part. I can have as many clips as I want. I can rearrange clips by dragging and dropping. If your videos didn't come out in this order, if they came out in this order, you want the indoor shot first, you want me walking second, and then you want me in the car third. If they're not in the right order, just drag them. See, click and drag, move. You're going to see a little vertical bar that appears. Where would you like to drop your clip? Beginning, middle, end. So. Put them in this order. You don't have to, but put them in this order. Yes. Um, I am 
Once you added the better one, you should still be able to add more. Oh, that was it. I Now, I noticed yours already looks a little bit different than mine, and that's okay. Let me address this. When I, uh, when I added my three clips, they look nice and compact like that. Yours probably looks a little bit more like this. Yeah. On the bottom right corner, there is a zoom. Let's drag this little zoom slider all the way to the left. That's a zoom slider. When you're working with many clips at once, that screen on the right side is going to go on and on and on. Okay, everyone, I know this is new and exciting for all of us. If you're going to help your neighbor, again, be a little quiet about it. If you need help, call me over, too. All right, everyone, so again, if we had the two days to work, this would be much better, but we've got one day to cover a lot, so let's not try to drag ourselves down. Right away, if you have, if you need an, an issue answered, ask me perhaps instead of your neighbors because you, your neighbors are probably trying to learn it as well. And again, if you do help each other, please be a little bit quieter because we're going to distract each other. So how do we compact it again? We've got this little slider on the bottom. Slide it to the left. This slider here will show us all of our clips in a more compact way because if I've got a 10-minute clip to work with. This is going to go on and on and on and on scrolling. Sometimes I need to compact this, zoom out, so that I can see everything at once. But honestly, when I work on projects, I'm always on the very rightmost zoom so that I can see more things at once. So if your screen looks different, I asked you to zoom all the way out. Okay, we looked at it in a certain way. Now let's zoom it in all the way to back to the right. The point of zooming in like this is now I can edit my video second by second. When I'm zoomed out this far, it's going to jump like 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds at a time. When I'm zoomed in as far to the right like that, every box here basically represents 1 second. 1 second, 2 second, 3 seconds, and this is not going to show you a progression of the video inside of the clip, unfortunately. That would be nice. I believe iMovie does that. It's going to show you the same one first shot throughout the whole clip, 
but each one of these is about one second of time. And what are these little mountains here? Sound speaking. Sound. Me speaking. So notice there's a part here, some amount of time in the beginning here where I'm not speaking yet. And do you see here a little black line? This black line, if you put your mouse on it, you'll see a hand. If you click and hold and drag it, do you see your video progressing on the left? See this? As I drag this over, I'm scrubbing through my video, this playhead here, I'm scrubbing through it. If I drag that little black line, right now I'm at 4.57 seconds out of one minute. And this moved also as well. So there's a couple of ways to kind of go through your video this way. Notice the black line is also moving. As I drag this little black line here or up here or down here, I'm in different parts of my video. If you click somewhere near each dividing second line, it jumps to that second, that second, that second. As we're zoomed in all the way to 100% of you here, and I click, it's going to jump me a second at a time. I'm trying to get in the middle. I'm trying to click right on my face, right in the middle. If each one of these is one second, so I'm at zero seconds, one second, two seconds, I want to get to half a second. If I try to click on half a second, it won't. It won't let me. It snaps at one second at a time when I'm zoomed in this far. When I'm zoomed out a little bit more, it's going to jump at different time scales. I jump to that block, and it jumped me about five seconds at a time. So that's the point of the zoom. As you zoom in and you zoom out and you click in between through your clip, it's going to jump you to different portions some amount of time, depending how zoomed in you are. I usually work, when I work with videos, all the way zoomed in so that I can deal with this at one second at a time, just jump between seconds, or of course, I want to get to half a second, drag it to half a second. So this is just us kind of understanding what we're dealing with here. We've got these different video clips. We're seeing the video of it, we're seeing the audio of it. Again, if you don't have headphones, you won't be able to get the full experience, and I don't have sound coming out of this thing, so um, I can't quite fully show you. Let me test it one more time if I've got sound. Oh, I do. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Okay, great. I do have sound. Okay, good. If you don't have sound, that, that's okay. Now, as I go back to the beginning of my clip, and I if I simply click play right here, the whole thing plays. Hello, everyone. This is Victor Campos. Play and pause. Or I can go next frame, next frame, next frame, next frame. So one frame at a time. Or back. And I'm going to say, as soon as possible, memorize the keyboard shortcuts. Because as we move our hand around to click on all of these things, we're going to get carpal tunnel. And so in order to speed things up, many tools, when you put your mouse on top of them, will give you a hint. If you put your mouse on top of play, it says space. Press the space bar. Press it again. So my hand might not be near the play. My hand might be over here, getting work done. My other hand, play it. Pause it. Move over here. Play it. Pause it. So, keyboard shortcuts. Many of these buttons will tell you some shortcut. Memorize the space bar. It's the quickest way to get your video to play instead of moving my mouse all the way over here. If you got one of these big monitors, you're going to be moving your mouse back and forth a lot. Notice I can go frame by frame. Next frame L, previous frame L. Not control L, not control J, simply L or J. I'm right here. I want to press the L button one frame over, one frame over, one frame over, frame by frame by frame by frame, to find the exact moment that I need to cut something out. Or J, to go back one frame at a time. So 
So again, this is software that has its own idiom, its own icons, its own structure, something new to learn. Um, we'll do as best as we can within our time period, but we do need to be at a faster clip. Let's uh, click... You've got a, a bunch of tabs at the top. Let's click on the very first tab, that blue one. That pops open. New project, open project, save project, publish movie, import from device, etc. Exit. We haven't done very much. We've loaded our clips, but I want to save my project as. I want to save what I've done so far in case the power goes out. I want to save this. Save as, you should know, is that when you save it new, you're going to give it a brand new name because the name of my project currently is my movie. Just like when you open a brand new Word document, it's untitled. You want to save as to save it and give it a name. As we work through the project, we want to do a regular save. We want to be saving as we work. And notice, save project has a shortcut F12, and save project, control S, like every other software. New project, control N, open, control O. So keyboard shortcuts, that one doesn't looks like, but many of them have a keyboard shortcut. Let's save our project as, and I'm going to save it in the same folder as the video clips that I gave you. So hopefully you've got a copy of that on your desktop, or remember to put it on your flash drive before you leave if you want a copy of this. Go to your video examples folder on your desktop, and there's going to ask it's going to ask you for a name here. It's going to save it as a movie maker project, a WLMP project. I think it stands for Windows Live Movie Project. What's the name? I'm going to say this is a time saver right here. Whatever name you put right here in the file is what YouTube will take to put into the title of your video on YouTube. I if I simply call this, you know, movie 001. And when I go to upload it to YouTube, it's going to want to call your video Movie 001, which is terrible. No one's going to find your video if it's called that. If you give it a real name, I'm going to say this is from my fictional tech review company. I'm going to call this Tech Review. I'm going to call this Victor's Tech Review. Moto E. That's the product I'm reviewing. That's the live file name. I can use spaces, apostrophes, all of that. And when I upload it up to YouTube, it'll take that name and add it to my video. I can, of course, edit this however I want, but this is a good time saver. This will automatically name your video, and if you think in terms of SEO, also keywords and such, it'll take those words and put them on your video when you upload to YouTube. Let's go ahead and save that. Perhaps the first thing I want to do is add some intro text, because if someone were to watch my video right now, they would see this. Hello, everyone. First of all, I need to cut out that silence. We'll see how. But no, in, no introduction. What's this video about? Most videos you see nowadays have some sort of screen at the beginning that tells you what the video is. And we can be as complicated as we want. We'll, we'll work with the tools we have here, because you can create a nice-looking intro graphic in Photoshop, let's say and then add that photo to the front of your video. We have the Add Video and Add Photo button here as well. So I can go design a really nice looking graphic in Photoshop, JPEG or Ping, and then add the photo and then put it at the front of my video, and I've got a cool intro graphic. We don't have time for Photoshop, so we'll do it a different way. Okay, so do they teach Photoshop here too? Definitely. There's okay. several classes that teach Photoshop, yeah. Not exactly sure when, but I know they have several classes. We'll do it this way. We have title, caption, and credits. Title is text that appears before the selected item. So make sure your playhead here, the black line, is at the very beginning. We're going to add a title, and then later we'll add credits, which happen at the end of the clip, at the end of the video. And we can have captions in the middle. So go ahead and click that little title button. 
we get some simple stuff here. Notice the screen changed. We had home, tab, animation, etc., etc., and I've got also now text tools format tab. Different tabs are going to appear at different with different tasks. I'm working with text, so I get a brand new text tab where I can select a font. So any font I have on my computer, Perpetua, Nueva, Mistral, etc. Got a bunch of fonts to choose from. And colors, and doing bold, and alignment, background color. Again, I don't have time to mention every single thing, but bunch of things for you to play with. It looks very terrible there, but I can change all of that. Increase size, decrease size, font. My text is getting cut off. Notice there's this box around my text. I can stretch out the box so that perhaps my text isn't cut off. It's not gonna it's not gonna put it all on one line. Unfortunately, my particular font, it takes up a lot of space, I suppose. I can change the size down a little bit, increase it. I have only this amount of space to work with, so if I make my text way too big, it might cut off. I actually click on the kind of group one to the beginning of the video. Like a, like it moved box. one what? Like it, it put like a dark box that were moved like Let me see your screen. I think I just clicked it on there and it appears over here. Too. No, that's, it. that's how it's supposed to do it. It puts text on a black background. Mine is blue because I changed it to a different color. <laughs> when you click elsewhere, your text might disappear. I thought, hey, I just wrote some text. Why did it disappear? Well, it also put in an effect. It, it, as if I click somewhere else, my text disappeared. Well, it's putting this effect right here, this zoom in small effect. I have, if you hover your mouse over some of these effects, it'll show you there's your text, it's going to zoom in. If I put my mouse on this one, it's going to look like that. Put my mouse on top of this one, it'll look like that. So I have all of these text effects. I haven't clicked on any. The one that has been clicked and active is the second one. Zoom in small. But I've got all of these to work with. Look at that, that's fancy. And then on the right side, I have here this... I've got three arrows. This is a little confusing. Scroll up scroll down, or show them all. So I can look at them this way. Let's say I choose this one, spin in. Click that. And now if I click play, look at that. If your text disappears, it's just probably got a certain effect, like uh, that zoom one. And notice now on this editing area, it added two things for us. We had our clip before our first video clip. It added a black box and then also a new layer, kind of like Photoshop, of text. We've got a layer or a track of video, a track of audio, a track of text. There's a track of text right here. If I want to go back to edit my text, there's several ways. If I click on a video clip, notice the things that I can do with the clip are different at the top here. If I click on the text, other things appear. So depending what you've got selected, you're going to have different capabilities. And if I click on my text and then click on the text format tab, I have edit text. It goes back to edit it. A faster way is if you double click your text track goes right to edit it. So if I lose my text, if I can't see it, instead of going up to the tab, I can double-click the track of text, 
and it should pop open for me to further edit it. I'm getting tired of that font, so I'll choose something else. That looks techy enough, too big, so I'll change my size, maybe change the box, and look at this. I can grab the edge of the text box and actually place it. It doesn't have to be exactly in the center. I can place it within this box of the video, rearrange my text size like that, now if I play it, it's text that appears in the corner. I've done a lot of hard work, so I'm going to save it. Notice on the top left corner, I've got a little floppy disk to save, save project, or I can do Control S if I'm used to that. I can also click on that first uh, Movie Maker menu and click Save. So you want to get in the habit of saving. Up on the top left corner, I've also got that back arrow. What does that mean, usually? Undo. Take it back. I made a mistake. Undo. I don't remember how many undos you have, but you can go back several steps. You made a bunch of mistakes. And if you go back and you say, actually, that wasn't a mistake, you've got redo next to it. Redo doesn't appear until you've gone back. You've got undo, redo. Maybe an extra one there to customize your menu, don't worry there. And so I've got this text that appears. If I go back to the beginning and press play, Victor's Tech Review, Moto E. And now I'm kind of waiting a while. Okay, I get the message. Then my video starts. Well, I think perhaps my text lasts too long. What I'm going to say about text is it's always deceptive in that we are working with our project and it's on our minds a lot. We know how it we know how it um, looks, how it sounds, how it should be. We've got it, we, we're, we're living our project. Therefore sometimes we can't stand outside of it. Is this really good? Am I doing a good job? Is this too long? Is this too short? It's always a good idea to get opinions from others, but be careful about that because everyone's got an opinion. What I'm saying here is, regarding text, one trick to figure out if your text is too long or too short on screen is to read it out loud and try to read it about three times. If you can read it comfortably three times, it's probably on screen enough. If you can only get past reading it once, it's way too short. It's not on screen long enough because in your mind you read at light speed. As you read it out loud, you're reading it more like a regular person reading it for the first time, because you know what it says. But when a person sees it for the first time, they have to say, oh, text, Victor's review, and then it passes by. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to press play, and then I'm going to read it out loud. Victor's tech review, Moto E. Victor's tech review, Moto E. Victor's tech review, Moto E. And then it ends. Maybe a little too long. I can edit that. We'll see how. But that's my, that's my test. Can I read it out loud comfortably? I'm not going to zoom through reading it comfortably three times or so. Obviously, if you've got a big wall of text to read, definitely you need it to be on there longer. I've seen so many YouTube videos where I'm trying to watch it. They pop up a screen full of text. I'm three quarters of the way reading it or half, and then it's gone because they, because they don't think that other people will read it with their slow brains whereas their own brain has already read it 10 times because they know what it says. If you wanted to extend the time or decrease the time that a text is visible, the slightly confusing thing is that usually text is attached to a clip. I've got a clip that it automatically made for me, a black background, and then it put the text on top of it. If I added text on my face here, the text would be attached to that clip. So this text is attached to that clip. This clip, if you click on it, tells you it lasts seven seconds under the text, under the, under the video tool. I've got this background under the video tools tab that when I select the black box, it lasts seven seconds duration. If I click on the text itself also, under the text tab, it says it lasts seven seconds. So if I change the duration, don't do this yet, but if I change the duration of my text to 10 seconds, 
Notice then it spills into my next clip. Okay, I might want that, but I want the opposite. I want my text to last a little bit less. It was seven seconds, let's say five seconds. Decreased at five seconds, perfect. Not quite, because the black box still lasts the original seven seconds. So you're gonna have about two seconds of blank, like this. Victor's Tech Review, Moto E. Okay, I get the message, and then it starts, and then uh, and then it starts. What I'm getting at is text is a little bit special in that it is attached to some clip. So I'm going to recommend usually you're going to change the duration of the clip, and then the text will follow. I'm going to go back to Video Tool, and I'm going to change the duration of this background color. I'm going to change it to 5, and the text followed to 5. If I change the duration to 10 seconds, the text went to 10 seconds because it's attached. So it looks really easy. I'm going to change the duration of the text. That might not give you the result you're looking for. You have to remember that text is attached to a video. Even this black box is, is a video in the eyes of Movie Maker. So if I want a little bit less time of text, I decrease my video, let's say 6 seconds. Victor's Tech Review Moto E, Victor's Tech Review Moto E, Victor's Tech Review Moto E, done, and the video starts. Hello everyone. My actual speaking part, I spend a little bit of time before I speak. I'm prepping myself. I can see visually I start to speak right there where those mountain starts. Let's say I want to cut out all of this silence where I'm just staring at the camera. All of this stuff. Hello everyone. I want to cut that out. If you drag your playhead here to approximately where that starts, let's see, I'm not going to put it right on top of the words, a little bit before it. If you, if you have a six second long text like me, then what you're going to look at is 8.23 seconds or so. If you've still got the seven second long text, then yours will probably be at 9.23 or so. We always get out of sync really fast as we start editing these clips. So if I tell you go to go to second number 12.7, yours will probably diff be different than mine because the nature of this, our clips will, will be different. But visually, somewhere near me starting to speak, not right on top of it because I might cut out words, near it, 8.2 or so, I'm going to cut out what happens before it. I've got video tools tab. Make sure you're on the video tools tab. A bunch of things like fade in and all that cool stuff. But the one I care about at the moment is set start point. Put your mouse on that. Trim the selected video so it starts at the current point. There's about a second or two where there's nothing going on. I want to cut that out. This set start point will cut out everything before my playhead in this clip. It's not going to delete everything behind it, even the text. It's only going to delete everything in this selected clip from the beginning of the clip to where that playhead is at, where I haven't done anything yet. So if I click Set Start Point, and I play it again, Hello, everyone. it goes right away into my speaking. Is it cut that? It completely removed it. It didn't. It didn't split it. It removed it. Everything so before were, that playhead is removed. You were halfway through. Oh, I see. It didn't. Sorry. There was this amount of time up to this point that was kind of dead. So when I click here and then I just click that set start point, it removed everything. See how now what shows is right away my speaking. Mm -hmm. Question. Well, the cool thing is that your original video is not altered in any way. The video still exists in the original file. What Movie Maker is keeping track of is your edits. So 
So your original video is never edited. It's in my folder, the still exact the same way. But Movie Maker here kept track of this part was removed from the project. It just didn't remove the original video. Yes, I'll mention I'll mention that in a moment. Um, because here that might have been a big a big uh, abrupt transition, don't you think? So let's say also I wasn't very careful. Let's say I put my playhead here, set start point, and then now. Maybe it's way too abrupt. So there's several things we can do here. Um, as I figure out where to cut, again, sh keyboard shortcuts. I don't want to move my hand all the way up there every time I'm, I'm cutting. Setting start point. I can right click, and I've got here set start point. So on my right click menu, much faster perhaps, set start point. Even faster. I, the letter I, not shift I, control I or anything, just I. If you press I on the keyboard, wherever your playhead is at, it will give you an in point. That's how I, I memorize it. We're going into the clip, I. I press I on the keyboard right there, and it cut everything before it, just like as if I had clicked up here or right clicked here. And I will delete everything before you at this point. So let's say I am cutting out some of this. I'm going to be just about there, 8.25 or so. I'm going to cut out the previous part, I. And then now if I back up here and then press play, spacebar, there's the text. Hello everyone, this is Victor. And then suddenly I appear. Well, if I want a bit of a better fade between one clip into another clip, these are the animations. Yes. Well, like any software, we have some undo button. And like I said earlier, if you press this button right here, you have undo. Control Z, which is the quick way on your keyboard, or you press that little back button and it takes back your last action. So I want to go from one clip to another, but not so abrupt. I selected this clip, not the, not the text clip, the, the clip of my current one. I guess the way you think about it is you select the clip to fade into. I'm not going to select the text so that this one fades into that one. I'm going to select the one that comes to select to fade it from where it came. That's just something to get used to. I'm going to fade this clip into this clip so I select the second clip. And then when I go to the top here, Hello everyone, this is Victor Khan. If you put your mouse on, I haven't selected it yet. Or this one. Hello everyone, this is Victor Khan. And I've got a bunch of them to choose from, like this Hello one. Everyone, this is Victor Khan. This one. Hello everyone. Mute myself for a moment. So if I everyone, hover over, it'll give me a preview. Hello something everyone, like this, this is Victor. Something Hello like everyone, this. this. Something like this. Hello everyone, this. The ones I usually use most often, and this is annoying, I don't use any of these first ones over here. These are way too showy. I usually use in the second row one of these three. Hello everyone, this is Victor. Blur. Com Hello everyone, this is Victor. Blur Com through black. Hello everyone, this is Victor. Com crossfade. Notice they're all slightly different. I like crossfade a lot because it shows the first clip and the second clip fading into each other, which is technically different than Hello this everyone, one. This it was a little bit of a white flash first and then I fade it in, whereas this one there's Hello black everyone, first and Com then I fade it. But this one, both Hello clips everyone, together fade. Com one fades out, one fades in. That's on the second row, and, I, and I'm, it's really annoying that I have to keep going to the second one to just click it. They should have made that on the first row. I think people are going to use these most often than any of these fancy ones, like this crazy Hello one everyone, right this here. Is this is so 80s. Unless you're trying to get that vibe, this one's Hello even everyone, like, this you're never going to use this hard one. Hello everyone, this is <laughs> Hello everyone, Unless this you're going to do your, your wedding vows video Hello everyone, in the 21st century. Com there's all of these ones, and honestly, I hardly use any of them. Not, none of them really. This that's Victor kind Tom. of good oh, right there. Um, Hello, everyone, this, is Victor this like, who's going to need Hello, everyone, champagne bubbles in their, in their video? Hello, everyone. This is, this is Victor Kahn.
How many how many weddings are you going to go to? Who's going to need these jaws opening up here? Hello everyone, this is Victor Kahn. This is not Star Wars. Hello everyone, this is Really, the one I use all the time is on the second row. Most of the time, this crossfade one, and oftentimes these two other blur and blur from black. So I'm going to select the crossfade one. Turn my volume back on. You, it actually applies when you click it. So I'm going to. I've got my clip selected. I'm going to click crossfade, and then I'm going to go back. I usually back up a few seconds to play it because I don't back up exactly at that moment. That doesn't give you enough of a breathing room to see did it actually look good. I back up a few seconds and then I play it. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos. Looks pretty good. You might think though, let me make it a little more obvious here. Hello everyone, this is Victor. I'm s I feel I'm starting to speak too soon that I'm still seeing the text before I see my face. This is going to be completely up to you. This is not right, this is not wrong. You might not even know what I'm talking about. You might not, you might not see what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that I start to speak before, I, before I'm visible. Hello everyone, this is Victor. I might not want that. I might want my face to be visible, very slight hesitation, and then I start to speak. It's completely up to you. So what I've done is I've clipped my video and I've added this transition, and you can see the transition right here. Old clip, new clip, the part in the middle. This faded from here to here, and it took all of this time. Even that can be edited. How long is this transition happening? 1.5 seconds. If I change that to a quarter of a second, notice the triangle is really small here, and there's a quick transition between this one Hello, everyone. And that one. See how fast that went. So you can change transition duration, but notice it's attached to the clip, the second clip, duration. And furthermore, I think I cut it too close again. I want a little bit of a hesitation before I start to speak. And here, text, and suddenly I appear, even though it's got a transition. So I'm going to undo this a few times. You don't have to do this, but as you work on this and you, and you develop a style, you'll figure this out. But I'm going to undo it until I take the transition back. And I'm going to take it back also that I cut too much. I'm actually going to put it somewhere more like here. Or just to be safe, way back here. Because part of this, even though I'm not speaking yet, I need that to blend it with the previous clip. I will be cutting out approximately a second up here, nothing's happening, and I'm going to need about a second to do the fade, and then I start to speak. Again, this takes practice to, to even realize this. But I'm going to cut my clip here. I'm going to press I to, in, to go into my clip right there. I've got my second clip selected, and I'm going to select again this crossfade one. Now look at that. The crossfade is happening before I start to speak. Previously this was overlapping on top of me speaking. And you and it might not matter to you, but let's see how this looks. Hello everyone, this is Victor. Kind of like that a little better. It's it's up to you if you like it or not, but I'm liking that. Hello everyone, this is Victor Kopp. with a new On The Road review. We're going to head on out, and before that we're going to take a look at the brand new Motorola Moto E. It's okay, so I'm going to review this product, Motorola Moto E. It would be nice if I can show the text right here, Motorola Moto E. I can do that. I move my playhead wherever I want the text to appear, so I have to move it around and figure out when do I mention it. And in Motorola. So at approximately this point, in my case, it's about 14 seconds. Yours might not match up, but you'll have to find some place. And again, if you can't hear it, it's going to be much harder. That's okay, but somewhere around here. I'll just put it right here. At about this point, I want to mention the name of the product on screen. Back on the Home tab, I have Caption. Title adds text at the beginning, credits at the end, captions in between, wherever I want. Click Caption, enter your text here, Motorola, 
Moto P. And what I would say about text that appears on screen for people to really read, don't go with a crazy font. Go with weird, interesting, crazy fonts for your title, perhaps your credits, but when you actually want someone to really read it, go with basic fonts. Arial, Times, Myriad, Helvetica, just basic fonts. And also, perhaps, make them a little bit bigger or bolder so that they are more readable. <coughs> so now I've added that text. And this shows here, it's going to last all of this amount of time, usually it's seven seconds. I, I might be showing that text too long, but I'm going to do that test. Can I read it three times um, leisurely? Hello, everyone. We're going to head on out. And before that, we're going to take a look at the brand new Motorola, Motorola Moto E, Motorola Moto E, Motorola Moto E. So let's take a look. Yeah, it's taking way too long. So in this case, I would edit the length of the text, just the text itself. I wouldn't edit the length of the clip because that wouldn't make sense. I'd cut out myself instead of the text. So if you select your text, go to Text Tool, and I'd say, I don't know, let's start with five seconds. And let me mute myself. So it's Before coming that, up on screen here. Motorola, 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 Motorola Moto E, Motorola Moto E, Motorola Moto E. So let's take a look. fine. The text suddenly popped on screen. Well, I have effects that I can add. Fade in. Do a little stretch thing. Do a weird spin. Move in from the side. That might be cool. Move in from the bottom. And if you double click your text, remember you can still edit it. So I'm actually going to move it over here because if I move it over here, I can't read this white text on this bright screen. If I move it over here, I can move that, I can read that white text on my dark jacket. And then I'm gonna add also one of these animations to really catch your eye. And before that, we're gonna take a look at the brand new Motorola Moto E. A readable font, a little bit larger size and bold. Before that, we're going to take a look at the brand new Motorola Moto E. It's a great phone for those of us that are on the go. So let's take a look at it. How did you find it so fast? When you select your text in the text tab, I chose the one right here. So then at the very end of that clip, I do a little thing where I push it towards the camera, and then I switch there. Um, that particular clip also has parts where I'm checking, am I recording? So I would also need to cut that out. Let's see how this part goes. This device has a variety of features such as a 5-inch screen, 20-megapixel camera, and other amenities that are great for you. With its a five. All right, so I've got some parts in there where I'm not doing anything at all. So I'd want to cut those out the same sort of way. The right-click set start point. But that might be a very abrupt change from this indoors to outdoors. So I will set a new start point where it's not so much empty part. And maybe do some sort of transition as well. Crossfade or something. So let's see. I know that I probably need about a second or so before I actually start to speak. Remember, each one of these vertical lines, if you're zoomed in all the way, is about a second. So as I start to speak approximately here, I back up to one second or so. I don't need to know the exact time. Each one of these represents approximately a second. At this point, I will right-click, set start point. And then so it goes from being to here this is to being here. Question. Um, 
undo um, the thing. If you don't get something exactly the same as me, you can move on because you know many more concepts are coming up. If you miss one thing, you can fall back to the bar. So the phase was on the video tools, transitions, and then the second game. This will write it in the second So if I go from one clip to another, there is that style that one thing is visible and then suddenly another thing. That's a hard cut. There's a clip and another clip and suddenly a hard cut. That's a style. It, people use it all the time and you might want to. Here's how mine looks. So suddenly I'm there. Okay, you might not want that. You might want some more of a soft edit, a soft cut. So that's where we've got all of those animations. That's where I can choose one of these more extravagant ones. <laughs> Or I can choose one of these more subtle ones. So I'm going to go with the crossfade again. I've got my second clip, which is going to fade into my previous clip. I'm going to select crossfade. Great. But I'm going to go back and play it because you'll see that this often happens. I'm going to go back to about this point. On the go. So let's take a look at it. This, this device has. See that now the crossfading has taken too much time from my previous clip and my current clip. Do you see that? Oh, let's take a look at it. I'm not done speaking on the previous clip and suddenly it's fading into the new clip. And I see that right here. This little ramp shows that I was still speaking on the previous clip right there before I go over here. So this is the practice that you will... This is what you will get as practice because I might have, uh, for example, made the duration of this clip too long. I can put it back shorter. So now what that looks like is I'm done speaking here, and then it fades. That might work. For about half a second. That might work. There's no wrong answer here, really. It's like, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, obviously, as a beginner, with this whole new world of video editing, this could be very frustrating. I have this vision. Why can't I do it? Again, I can show you the software, but it's up to you to practice and to learn and to make it work how you want. That might not be a problem. You might not see a problem. With practice, you, you'll get what you want. This is the I'm just going to do a short quarter there. And then the thing also that I then realize is when I go from one volume to another, I mean from one location to another, my volume is different. This device has... So obviously this clip is much louder than the first. I have a few things I could do. I could increase the volume of the first clip or decrease the volume of the second clip, or maybe both. I'll show you both. If you click your first clip, and go to video tools, we have video volume right there. And we've also got a fade in or fade out of the audio of the video. There's no fade in or fade out, but I can do slow, medium, fast. And that's not what I need. I need to change the volume completely of this first clip. So I've got the first clip selected, video volume, it's in the center, make it louder. 
It's a great phone for those of us that are on the go. So let's take a look at it. This is not a huge difference. So that's telling me in the future, speak louder. Because there's some degrees, some things that I can't completely fix, right? So as I get practice, and I want to disturb the neighbors, um, it, uh, it did that. So and then right here, that's taking too long. So I'll cut that. This, this is device. device. OK, my second clip is too loud. There's the opposite now. The first clip, I increase the volume. The second clip, each clip can be edited independently. And I may, maybe put that halfway. This, this device, device has, has even. This, this device, device had. There we go. It's it's not so it's not so loud. Comparing the first clip again. So let's take a look at it. This, this device, device has a variety of features. Now again, as you get practice, I hear a little click between the two clips. That might have been the moment that I turned off my recorder or the moment that I turned on my recorder. So one trick that I like to do if there's like some li weird little pop at the beginning or end of a clip is do a fade in. I'm going to try first to do a fade out on the previous clip. I have a feeling that the pop, the little click, is on that one. So I'm going to do a fade out on the first clip. Let's do a fast one perhaps. So let's take a look at it. This, this is device. device. Yeah, it was on the first clip. So a little fade out fast. Uh, clear that sound out at the very end. Yes? So can you position anywhere on that clip? So when you do a fade out, it knows definitely just yes. the end is over again. Yes, good point. Anywhere in the clip, because the clip is selected, fade the clip in or out at the beginning or the end. So fade in will always fade in the clip at the beginning of the clip, always, not where your head playhead is at. And fade out will always fade out that clip at the end of the clip, not where the playhead is at. Is there a way to do that um, in sections? No. You have to create separate individual clips. You would create separate ones, yes. So that's a little bit more advanced that this software doesn't have a very easy way to do. But what you're saying could work. So then we go on to the second clip. This device, device has a variety of features such as a 5-inch screen, 20-megapixel camera, and other amenities that are great for you. I didn't know what to say, so it ended weird. Uh, but I could put in some text in here as well. When I say 5-inch this and 20-megapixel that, I could have that pop up on screen also. If I do want to do that, I have actually very limited time because this particular clip doesn't last that long and I'm going to say, I guess, three things. My text won't be visible enough times, perhaps. So again, shoot a better video next time. There's some things that I'm going to be able to do in the editor and some things definitely not. So um, if I wanted to add the text to really emphasize 20 megapixels, I want to find the place where I say that and put it on, into the text. One thing that you could do a little bit more advanced Let's say I chose the right text size, the right font, the right color, all of that. If I click somewhere here to add a brand new uh, text, a brand new caption, it's going to give me probably the basic text again. So one thing that I could do actually, I can right click my first bit of text, copy, and then wherever I want it to show up again, over here somewhere, <coughs> right click, Paste. So that took my video with the that that took my text with the same animation, the same font, the same size, etc. I just need to change the text. You double click, and what did I say here it was five inch screen. Let's take a look at it. This, this device, device has a variety of features, features such as a five inch. I can drag this around to put it in the right place. Features such as a 5-inch screen, 20-megapixel camera, and other amenities. A 
variety of features such as a 5-inch screen, 20-megapixel camera, and other amenities that are great for you. We'll do one thing and then we'll take a break. Uh, we've been talking about um, putting your in point. Right click, set start point in. I used to call it in point because it's the eye. What if I want to cut out a little bit at the end of a video? Uh, I have set end point, which is up here on video. Set end point, which is simply O, your out point. I want to, I want to go out of my video at this point. In my particular case, I don't like my very last sentence that I said. Amenities that are great for you. For you. It seems that for you is right here. I just simply want to say, that are great. But I then say, for you. So based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like if I kind of put my mouse approximately here somewhere, thank you, and then do the right click, set end point, or press O, it look like this. And other amenities that are great. Again, I can't really fix that in post-production. I would need to re-record that to get it exactly how I want, but at least I cut out the part that I think sounds a little awkward. So, so camera and other amenities that are great. I have to live with it. But um, they are great. And then it goes on to the next view over here. With, with its, its ability, ability to, to scan, scan your emails, emails and always keep you... Okay, that's obviously a way too big of a transition. So I'm going to do the same thing. Figure out where to cut this, probably a second before I start speaking. <coughs> so I for the end point, and then do some sort of animation. I'll be doing crossfade. Let's see. Yeah. So again, shoot a better video. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> Let me change my duration there. Let's see half a second. Other amenities that are great. With its ability. So maybe I don't want to take out for you. So I'm going to back up. Amenities that are great for you. Okay, I'm going to leave for you because I apparently need that amount of time, but I'm still going to back up about one second here, cut that out, and then put the transition in. Half a second or so. And other amenities that are great for you. With its ability to. Good enough. This again. How long did this? How long did it take you to make that video? Forever. Oftentimes, okay. if you really want to get it really good, you're going to spend a lot of time. You're going to be going back and forth and cutting this out and undoing and redoing. It takes a while. The video recording part of it is the easy part. You know, um, uh, George Lucas shot Star Wars, you know, in a few months, but then he took three years to edit it together so that it's a movie. The brand new one that just came out yesterday, J.J. Abrams, he, 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 record, he recorded everything, you know, three months, four months. But I remember seeing on Instagram a photo posted that said, 500 days left until the release of Star Wars. 500 days later, and I just saw it yesterday. So it takes time to do the editing. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so here I could spend time obsessing over this, but I have limited time. Let's take a break to process this, and then we'll see some other things that we can do. But obviously, this is free software. This is, you're bound by your time, basically. It's not a matter of, can you do this? Yes, you can do this. It's a matter of time. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Again, I've been playing with video for about two thousand since 2008, and I've done some videos for paying clients, but I always am practicing and playing with this stuff on my own to get a little better, to charge more. But you need to uh, practice it. So it's uh, one twenty-ish. Let's take a ten-minute break. How back much at, how much we'll be back at eleven uh, thirty, and then we'll go on.